Now that we've taken a look at adding Ragdoll to props to get some uh, rigid body dynamics put in there, let's take a look at uh, getting some Ragdoll on Lettra. And if you have your own character, uh, what you'll need to do is set up your own collision shapes and everything. But if we take a look at uh, the test geometry Electra node that we have here, and we take a look at its um, parameters, you can see we have a little checkbox here called Configure Ragdoll. So now by clicking this on, uh, we'll be able to use Ragdoll with Electra. And if we go into our scene animate here, now <clears throat> what we could do is we could see we have Electra here. And if I go into Ragdoll, you can see it's created a Electra Ragdoll for us. And if I hit Control G and we go into our Ragdoll settings, I'm just going to turn off the ground display again. I'm going to hit auto reset uh, simulation and auto reload target animation on. So if I do any changes, it'll, uh, we'll get the update. And uh, what we can see here is the character will just fall straight down. So I'm just going to turn off Electra and I'm going to leave her controls on here now. And again, we can see the collision shapes. So what we can do is we can select the collision shapes in here. I'm just going to turn off the controls for a second. We're, I'm going to select the collision shapes here. And if we open up G for uh, to get our ragdoll parameters, um, what we can do is very similar to what we did before is we can turn on the active or non-active uh, on the character. So if I wanted her to be standing still and just have her upper body to be uh, Doing what, what I could do is just turn those off from being active, and now we just have the upper body there. Um, what we can also do is leave all of, uh, have all of the um, body to be active, but we're going to take the head and turn it inactive. And now everything will just stand there because it's just being uh, held up by the head here. So really quickly, we're able to just, uh, again, we can key on the, um, so if we wanted to uh, do something where we want the bottom of the body here. So first of all, I'm going to turn the head active and I'm going to select the bottom of the body here. And I'm going to just uh, set a key at frame, uh, at frame 15, set a key on the active. Um, and right before then, I'm just going to set a key again and turn off the active. So now we can get the body going and then the body will, the lower legs will go after that at that frame. So we can start uh, just being able to decide what ones are turning on when we want them to be turned on from. So now if we had some animation on this and we wanted to have the animation to begin with first and then turn into Ragdoll, we can take a look at that here. So here I just have a stair set up. I just use a copy. Um, and what this allows us to do is just with a box, um, just with the total number of copies, you can just see how high or low you want your uh, stairs to be. And I'm just going to copy and paste this with the alt drag method, um, just to have a clean one that I can start working from. And we'll head in there. And you can see I've just have some animation of the character just walking down the steps. And now if I wanted her to slip, and um, slide down those steps. We can take a look at that by, again, going into the ragdoll. And when I open up Control-G, I'm just going to turn off the ground plane again, uh, just because we don't need it. Uh, we don't need to see it. Um, and you can see here what's happening is that everything's falling down. The stairs are falling down as well. So if I open these up, I'm just going to turn these off. I'm going to select the stairs. And when I hit G and go into our rag doll here, I'm going to go into animated. I'm going to take this off active. And now our stairs will not be sliding down. They'll be staying uh, in its proper position, but we're using them as a collision object. And now you can see for Electra, she's just not following the animation. She's just following down right away. And what we can do is grab Electra here um, and have and decide where we want it to be. So if we want it to be uh, walking with the character, what we could do is uh, set a key on match world transforms and click that. And what we'll do is we'll just click on the position and the orientation stiffness for now. And now we have the character the following right away because it's matching our world transforms of what our animation is. And I'm just going to set auto reset simulation and auto reload target animation on. So if I do any changes, we'll see them being updated. So what I want to do right now is when we hit here, I want the character to slide. So I'm going to set a key on here um, at 100. And I'm just going to set another keys on the position and orientation stiffness. And then at frame 25, what I'm going to do is 
just put another key on on the match world but I'm going to change the set keys on the position orientation stiffness and I'm going to set these values to zero so now what we have is the character walking and then it falling down uh, right away but you can see that it's it's just falling straight down it's not taking any consideration that's because the animation only goes up to uh, here. So what we want to do is drive the animation a little bit more and we can turn on uh, Electra's uh, controls here and uh, The other thing I'm going to do is in here I'm going to switch it from collision shapes to skin geometry and now I can actually see Electra a little bit better without uh, worrying about the uh, geometry in there. So what I'm going to do is for Electra, I'm just going to click on the block and set a key, uh, pin that just so I'm keying that. And we have a frame 20 and then at frame 25, I'm going to uh, do some uh, slight changes to this. So if we had the foot, say, sliding out now, and you can see that we're seeing the update on the character going on. If I wanted to grab the COG and um, actually I'm going to grab the upper body mover just to grab this and I can grab this and have the character moving a little bit more. And we can take a look at, uh, let's just grab the right arm out here and we can have that uh, kind of reaching back, falling out to the side. And I'll do it with the uh, right one as well. And we can get that going. And then uh, let's just rotate the heads back here a bit just to have it falling back a bit now. And so now when we play this through, now we can get that now we get that sliding and then the ragdoll going on here and we can still start adjusting how this ragdoll behaves um, one thing we can do is take the the stairs ragdoll and in our constant we can add a bounce on here so let's just try 0.5 on there and we have friction at one so i'm going to actually put this down to 0.1 and um, what we could see is now the character slides much farther down because we reduced all that friction and uh, we've added a little bit of bounce on, on that character. So if we wanted to try it, we could try 0.5 and see how this will um, change everything. And you can see it's getting uh, not falling down as much. And we could take a look at Electra and do the exact same thing. So if we wanted to put a bounce of 0.5 on there and let's put the friction down to 0.5 for Electra. And now we get the sliding and the rotating around as well um, as we need. So um, that's basically it for the general workflow for um, the ragdoll. We can start keying at what we want in there to start driving the animation, much like that table that we could uh, take. I can grab this front leg just so that that knee doesn't go out as much, have it kind of go over here. Um, and we can just slide this out a bit more. And so you can start playing around with it and start seeing how you could change how that uh, behavior of that ragdoll is working. And then of course, uh, what we can do for everything is with uh, um, the Electra um, controls, all our controls selected, what we can then do is we can go into our uh, bake keys and bake it to a new layer. And so if we wanted to from uh, Starting at frame 20, where we were uh, turning it on, we could start baking, uh, start recording our poses, and we could start driving it through here um, as much or as little as we want. I'm just going to leave it at that, st stop that. And then um, if we look at our animation layers, we can see we have a ragdoll layer here. So if we go out to animate and we turn on Electra and our stairs again, now we can see that all these controls now have all those keys put on it. Uh, and so now we have uh, we could start continuing to animate um, from here if we wanted to. And depending on how many keys, we, you could just do it sparse with only five every five frames and then have a lot of control over it and be able, easy to animate it. Or we could just mute it. And if we wanted to, we can just start changing that again. So um, that's the basics for Ragdoll with the character. Uh, very similar to the Ragdoll with uh, the uh, props by being able to turn on um, some of our, uh, when it's active, how it's matching the world's uh, animation and being able to start uh, adjusting the pose to start driving that uh, Ragdoll.